For me, I describe golf as an eternal search. As I wander the shores of Lake Allswater, embracing the autumnal beauty of the Lake District, my mind wanders back to golf and this week's burning question. Will jumbo grips help the average golfer play better golf? And could we attempt to answer both questions in one episode of Off The Beaten Track? It's a big ask, but what the heck? So I need two things to make this video happen. One, the best golf course in Cumbria. And two, some golf clubs with jumbo grips on them. This is Leeming House sat on Lake Ullswater and has to be one of the nicest locations we have stopped off at during the series so far. It's time to get packed up and take the 30 minute drive to the Willie Fernie designed Appleby Golf Club. Once described as the Sunningdale of the North, which is high praise indeed. Question is, how will it fare on a wet Wednesday in the November rain? Fairways roll like a crumpled duvet. Greens are more square than round and are protected by bunkers, runoffs and swales and uh, electric fences. In the distance, fells and pikes emerge from the moorlands. This is a stroll that not even the worst shot could possibly interrupt. So we may have found one of the best courses in Cumbria and certainly found somewhere off the beaten track. But what about jumbo grips? Are they really a thing? Can they help me? Can they help you? Or is this just another gimmick? So after playing the first three holes, I'm pretty confident that I'm going to find you somewhere off the beaten track that is going to be uh, on your to-do list. I've never heard of this place until perhaps two months ago and uh, it could be pretty special. But we've got two things to do. Have a look at this golf course and of course Jumbo Grips. I'll send a whole load of grips, different types, shapes and sizes by Jumbo Max. This is a straight tech ultra light. Straight meaning there's very little taper at all. It's a medium sized grip and it's kind of the thinnest one if you like uh, once you go into that jumbo grip category. So I'm going to hit some balls in what I got Lewis to put on a uh, five, seven and a nine iron. So we've got a fair spread. I'll hit plenty of shots around here and I'll give you my thoughts on uh, well, whether or not these can help or hinder your game. Oh, stay straight. It's actually a really nice strike. I was aiming to try and bring that in a bit. And it probably was the right club as well. This is the fourth hole and a lovely par three. Plays downhill, 175, and that was a five iron. First go with the jumbo grips. And I say that it stayed out there and maybe there's a positive it can take from that because it was very much a straight ball flight. What I was trying to do was turn the ball over a bit. So there's two ways of looking at that. I struggled a little bit to turn the ball over but if you're someone that hooks it and you're a little bit wristy, then maybe that's the whole purpose of what these trying to do. So that's an interesting one. It's got me, uh, yeah, a little bit confused, but there's no doubt the strike was very good and a very straight ball flight. That's right down the middle. Happy with that. I just want to get on to uh, what I consider a slight negative that springs to mind, and that is I've just gone from hitting a five iron. I then hit a wedge and I've now got driver in hand. The wedge and the driver had a standard grip on my normal setup. And it's really weird and odd to switch from one to the other. It feels so, so different. So my issue is, if you're gonna go jumbo grips, having now just played a wedge and a driver, I'm thinking you've gotta be all in. You've gotta have every single club. And I'm still not sure that no matter what happens with the test with the irons, whether or not that's something I could do or not. So to answer the question, which will inevitably come in the comments section is these are mats which are used um, in the UK to protect fairways during the winter time. But plenty are going to ask me exactly what those are. Right. So, five iron jumbo grip. I've pulled it down the left. It's actually long, if anything. Um, 
Uh, no great feedback on that one. Decent enough strike, just a pull shot from me personally. We're about to play that hole down there, which looks incredible in terms of the colours. We can't unfortunately see the tops of the mountains, which is a real disappointment because we're, we're literally surrounded by them. I still think that side is the Pennines, and uh, if that cloud would lift, then it would be a lot nicer to look at. But the autumn colours are amazing. And then if you look down this way, then we've got a... Uh, well, we've, got, we've already seen one lake, two lakes. The clubhouses are way over, and we make this kind of complete loop all the way round. It's a fair old walk, but it's a uh, certainly a spot to... I don't even know what all we're on. It's certainly a spot to stop and smell the roses. I'm going to play five iron, not necessarily because uh, it's the right club. It's a little bit because I don't know where I'm going. And secondly, because we can hit another shot with a jumbo grip. So you drill that and again, very neutral straight ball flight right down the middle. The thing I'm noticing, and I, I can't remember this being a thing in the past, is I've got these on a set of Mizuno Pro 225s. Every ball I've hit so far, um, and they've all been five irons, I've had to hit some short irons. They've all been a fairly low ball flight. So again, um, I, I have a tendency to hit the ball very high with irons, and that might be reducing that element of risk the game. So it's just interesting the impact it's having on, on my own personal ball flight and uh, ball flight characteristics. But I will be definitely looking to do some dry ball dates with these in a separate video. The tee was the correct choice. I've only got 80, 90 yards in. And it's very narrow down here. Again, a sort of long and thin green. More square than round, as I've said. Grab. Oh, nearly. It's a half a shot and it was just a chance to try and play what was a nine iron. Got it a little bit thin, so uh, again, can't take a lot from that. We're gonna have to have a full wedge and nine iron in, I'm afraid. Oh, I come down here just to drop a ball and show you this, uh, this bank and runoff that, to be honest with you, 90 yards away because of the light today, I don't even think you'd have picked it up. And uh, it is a shame we're, fi we're filming in pretty poor light. It's also worth noting I'm filming off winter tees and some of the tee boxes um, I'm looking for the next one right now are a lot more interesting obviously off the uh, the proper full tees. So it's a shame to not be able to show you this place uh, in all its glory. For those interested, uh, today in the clubhouse I paid £40 to play 18 holes. It's super dry underfoot. I've got a fresh pair of foot joys on and uh, the greens are firm. So great condition but you've got some winter elements to contend with like mats and... Um, you these kind of winter tea boxes and such like. Also worth noting, it was cheaper for the booked online because it was 35 quid and I got charged 40 quid in the clubhouse, which annoyed me a bit. I have nine iron ready because I'm pretty sure that's going to be the yardage you've got left into this next hole. Um, but one other thing that I think is a major issue for anybody who's looking to promote uh, jumbo grips in any way is that you can't try them. There's, there's nowhere to sort of try before you buy, so you've got to fully commit. And that means buying at least one stripping one of your clubs and putting it onto something so i think that's an issue that uh, i'm not sure how they resolve it but maybe there should be some demo clubs available uh, made from jumbo max themselves putting across retailers because i don't know is that not uh, is that not an issue for everybody have you ever tried them and uh, if you have how did you how did you manage it let me carry the bunker Oh, it carried the one and got a bit of a wicked kick. I'm going to try another ball as well because it is a 9 iron distance. It was a slight pull. I changed the swing slightly and uh, I'll tell you why in a minute or two. We'll see if we can get a slightly better shot than that one. Yeah, that's better. That's right at the flag. 
yep, right distance control. So one of the things I found is that in recent videos, you'll notice I've been kind of working on this kind of wrist hinge uh, setting very, very early in the swing. One of the things I've noticed with jumbo grips, it kind of makes life a lot harder to hinge the wrists. And that swing that I played then was, uh, was very different. It was a bit more all arms, if you like. So again, it's a positive and negative depending on where you are with your own swing type. If you are very wristy and that's causing you a problem to flick the wrists and all kinds of problems can happen, then maybe that would eliminate that um, because it's certainly more difficult to get the wrists involved. On the other hand, like I said, I'm trying to get the, the wrists more engaged in that swing of mine at the moment and it's proving to be just a little bit more of a challenge. I don't generally make a habit of showing the toilet facilities at, uh, or on a golf course, but I've just come to the kind of halfway house and a little bit of a toilet break. What I like about this is if uh, you need some inspiration, and there he is, the great man himself. Take one look at that and you're ready for the back nine. You know, I love a bench and uh, it's time for a cheese and ham baguette. I've pinched half of Hannah's. I said I didn't want one. And uh, it's just a shame really, the light isn't great. And um, the sort of, the fairways are like a crumpled duvet, I think I said, is that uh, you're not quite picking that up in the light. It's one of those courses where there's no such thing as a flat lie. It's got a lot of the kind of Hollywell vibe in terms of that and the sheep as well. iron should be spot on and I think to be fair again it's that neutral ball flight that really interests me and uh, I just almost ready to, to sort of quit the video in terms of the review of uh, my thoughts on these at least because I think I'm gonna be a hard one to shift because whilst I'm okay with them I'm not really seeing anything that's gonna make me jump and switch so I don't know I'm almost finished I think Roll out a bit. Oh, wow, that would have been a nice birdie. It was a super iron in, and uh, just to get over the top there, you may notice a different putter that we're going to be reviewing in, uh, in the next week or two, which I'm sure you'll all be interested in. I was really interested in this house in the backdrop because it's a tin roof. I love the way it stands off all the, uh, the backdrop, and we've probably got a few photographs, but uh, it's a tin roof, would you believe? Anyway, back to the video. One thing that you might have noticed and certainly picked up on the drone is there is no fairway bunkering whatsoever. And I'm assuming that's because this is some sort of grazing land. There's a lot of sheep on the land. And uh, it's a little bit of a shame because if they were able to get some bunkering on the fairways, this would elevate this course to a real different level. Because once you get into the greens themselves, the whole green complex, the, the sort of feeds into them, the runoffs, the swales, the bunkering, and the quality of the green is absolutely exceptional. And um, it's just, like I said, it's maybe a pity I just wasn't able to provide a little bit more definition by some, uh, with some bunking on the fairways. But it's, uh, it's not criticism, but it's definitely noticeable. I say the same thing after every shot. It's the straight ball flight that is without doubt 
a noticeable factor. So it's a huge positive. Let's not, we can't ignore that. Um, maybe I'm being greedy, wanting more than that. But yeah, it is definitely uh, straightened the ball flight. It might have just lost a little bit of um, launch. Certainly with that five iron, I seem to have hit the ball very low. And again, I'm not sure. Dry ball data is going to have to be uh, gotten on track, man, and maybe a separate video uh, later on this week, if I can get time to do it, comparing these three irons with the uh, same three irons, but with standard grip on. It's either a soft seven or everything I've got with a nine. It's probably an eight iron, but anyway, let's give it a go. Wind's got to carry it a bit more. I think that's going to come up short. Yeah, it is. And I was right, it was probably an eight iron. Unfortunately, we don't have another straight ball flight, but that's me done. I'm going to leave it there. I've got to walk up 18 and uh, I don't want to finish off with an audience in the clubhouse, so we'll, uh, we'll quit now. Appleby's been a really interesting golf course and I would love to play it on, uh, on a summer's day or a crisp winter morning. And uh, see a little bit more of the backdrop as well, which is unfortunate we can't show you today, but it's been, uh, it's been really enjoyable. And as for Leeming House, what a uh, stunning hotel. Really nice. And uh, the location is everything. The Lake District is such a, a wonderful part of the UK. And uh, if you get a chance, then make sure you visit. That's me done. Um, all I've got left to say is we're definitely going to take this one indoor onto Trackman. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. But at this stage, for me at least, the jury's out.